Hi everybody, this is God Sad. I was about to do a bit of exercising on the stationary bike and then prepare to watch Orange Man Bad Troll Avocado Brain in the debate in a few minutes. But instead, you keep pulling me back. So Matthew J. Mayhew wrote an article in Insider let me see, Inside Higher Education, where he was, uh, was a co-authored paper with a doctoral student, where he was saying, here's why we need college football. I actually read the article just to make sure that, you know, he hadn't said something that was truly objectionable. And he, and he was just basically arguing that, you know, football can unite people, it can allow people to make political statements, people in this case, meaning athletes, it can... Uh, cause people to root for different teams and yet, you know, be united in their love for the sport and so on. Like very, very, you know, innocuous stuff. But then he realized that he was a terrible person. And so I'm going to read for you the entire article that he wrote after the first article. Remember, the first article was written uh, to argue that why the country needs college football unbelievably innocent article nothing in it that is in any way you know offensive or anything but then he was so moved by his you know his hitlerian impulse that he wrote an apology and as any good apology goes there it is remember when you want to self-flagellate you bring out the big gun so here we go why America Needs College Football, Part 2. Matthew J. Mayu apologizes for an article that he recently wrote for Inside Higher Ed and describes <laughs> beginning a long process of anti-racist learning. It doesn't, meaning America doesn't need college. I was wrong. And even worse, I was uninformed ignorant and harm inducing i recently led a piece in inside higher ed titled why america needs college football i am sorry for the hurt sadness frustration fatigue exhaustion and pain this article has caused anyone but specifically black students in the higher education community and beyond. I am struggling to find the words to communicate the deep ache for the damage I have done. He wrote an article saying why, why the country needs college football. This is his apology. I don't want to write anything that further deepens the pain experienced by my ignorance related to black male athletes and the black community at any time, but especially in light of the national racial unrest. I also don't want to write anything that suggests that anti-racist learning is quick or easy. This is the beginning of a very long process, one that started with learning about the empirical work related to black college football athletes. Rather than make excuses, I should talk about which facets of the article that I have recently learned are harmful through my students, wider social media community, and distinguished academics like Donna Ford, Joy Gaston Gales, and Gilman Whitting. I learned that I could have titled the piece, Why America Needs Black Athletes. I learned that black men Putting their bodies on the line for my enjoyment is inspired and maintained by my uninformed and disconnected whiteness. And as written in my previous articles, positions student athletes as white property. By the way, this is why I am burning all my Barry White music, all my stylistics music, all my Delphonics music to think that I a non-black male has been listening to black music as my property disgusts me. I will be writing an article apologizing for being a huge fan of black music. It's disgusting. It's racist. And I was wrong. 
starting now, I only listen to Billy Ray Cyrus. He's a white man. That's what I should listen to. Okay, where were we? I have learned that I place the onus of responsibility for democratic healing on black communities whose very lives are in danger every single day. And that this notion of, quote, democratic healing, close quote, is especially problematic since the black community can't benefit from ideals they can't access. I have learned that words like distraction and cheer erase the present painful moments within the nation and especially the black community. In light of this hero's apology, do you know how disgusted I am with myself that I love Alvin Kamara, the running back of the New, York, New Orleans Saints? I mean, it makes sense that I would love that vile white man, Drew Brees. That makes sense. He's white. And sure, I'm a Jew of color, but I'm closer to his skin you. So that makes sense. But that, that I, a non-black, cheer and enjoy Alvin Kamara to know that I was engaging in turning Kamara into my property. I'm disgusted with myself. I'm disgusted with myself. Upon such beginnings of reflection, I have also learned that my love for black athletes on the field doesn't translate into love within the larger community, that I have been dismissive of black lives in moments not athletically celebrated. I have learned that I have taken pleasure in events that ask black athletes to put their bodies on the line and take physical risks. I have been entertained by black men who often are conditioned by society and structural racism in ways that lure them into athletics where the odds of making it are slim to none. I have a confession to make, and I don't feel good about this. In the 90s, this is very hard for me to say, I used to be a huge fan of Barry Sanders, the running back of the Detroit Lions. I now realize that was racist. I'm sorry. I'm only allowed to love John Riggins, the white running back, the clumsy, lumbering white running back of the Washington, not Redskins, Washington Football Club, that I, a non-black person, thought greatly and highly of Barry Sanders because of his incredible athletic prowess. I don't know what person I was back then, but moving forward, I only admire white running backs because to be attracted to black running backs perpetuates structural racism. I'm sorry. I'm just beginning to understand how I have harmed communities of color with my words. I'm learning that my words, my uninformed, careless words, often express an ideology wrought in whiteness and privilege. His article was on why college football should go on in light of COVID. I'm learning that my commitment to diversity has been performative, ignoring the pain the black community and other communities of color have endured in this country. I'm learning that I'm not as knowledgeable as I thought I was, not as anti-racist as I thought I was, not as careful as I thought I was. For all of these, I sincerely apologize. I know it's not anyone's job to forgive me, but I ask for it. Another burden of a white person haunted by his ignorance. Burn the white heretic. That, that's, I, I added that. To consider the possible hurt I have played a role in, the scores of others whose pain I didn't fully see, aches inside of me. A feeling different and deeper than the tears, tears and emotions I've experienced being caught in an ignorant racist moment. What an utter execrable castrato. I want this guy to come and live in the Middle East and the world that I grew up in for two nanoseconds. What a punk. Where was I? Where was I? Oh, yeah. To all communities of color 
and especially the black community, I am sorry for causing pain by ignoring yours. I really hate the idea of hurting anyone. Remember, his article that he's apologizing for is that he said college football should go on because it will unite the country. That's what he's apologizing for. I hate that I have done this. If I had not ignored the pain of so many, this article would ne have never been written. I hate that my students have to carry my ignorant, racist energy with them at all times. I hate that I brought a graduate student into this space with me as a co-author, Musbah Shaheen. I am sorry. I hate the fact that I have hurt my colleagues at Ohio State and the field of higher education, especially black scholars whose careers have been spent studying black lives. I'm sorry for ignoring your scholarship. I hate that I have let down my black friends and friends of color whom I love. Friends of color, how interesting, what a beautiful word. You know, I have two types of friends. I have friends of whiteness and I have friends of color. I'm gonna get rid of my friends of whiteness because they're white. I'm only, I'm gonna decolonize my Rolodex, so to speak. I'm only gonna keep friends of color. You better pray that you've got the right skin you or else you're out of the gab club. I am immeasurably grateful to the grace extended by Donna, Joy, and Gilman and for their willingness to work with me on these issues. I know they are taking a risk by partnering with me on this pathway. I mean, imagine they're partnering with a white guy. You know what kind of risk that is? I know that they are carrying a burden by even taking any time with me. I want to thank them. To really begin the long process of anti-racist learning. Oh, he should... Maybe you should take a seminar of color with uh, Ibram uh, Kendi or whatever his name is. I'm designing a plan for change, for turning the I am sorry to I will change. He's proactive. For moving Black Lives Matter from a motto to a pathway from ignorance and toward authentic advocacy. This, there is no way that this is a real article. This article smells like it's written by Dr. Gatsad, or is it? Hmm, you, know, you don't know. To do this, a colleague of mine asked me to center the question, what can I do to unlearn patterns that hurt and harm black communities and other communities of color? My center is as a learner. Bow, white person. Wash the feet, white person. My center is as a learner, so movement for me will involve unlearning and relearning by listening, by reading, <laughs> by dialoguing, reflecting, and writing as a means for increasing my awareness and knowledge about systemic racism and the experiences of people of color and people who hold marginalized identities different from my own. I need time to reflect on the specifics of this plan, which includes accountability measures. And I'm hoping news media like Inside Higher Ed will consider working with me and others on pieces that come from its inaction. To be clear, no one should ever put their bodies on the line for entertainment. To be clear, football, like COVID-19, places black bodies at disproportional risk. To be clear, <laughs> experts are not immune to ignorance. To be clear, no one can be anti-racist and ignore black pain. By the way, it's always capitalized black. And that of other communities of color. Bio, Matthew J. Mayhew is the William Ray and Mary Adamson Flesher Professor of Higher Education at Ohio State University. So let me summarize. Matthew J. Mayhew, Mayhew wrote an article with a student wherein he is very innocently arguing why college football should go on during the current COVID crisis. It wasn't an article rooted in race. It, it really was just, here are some reasons why football season should go on. His sense of self is so weak. His identity is so fractured and, and shattered the infestation of parasitic idea pathogens are so instilled within him that his self-hatred, his self-loathing, his sense of self is so 
tenuous that he had to write such a article to apologize and to turn it into a, a, an anti-racist action because he said that football should go on. And I guess the argument is that since many of the football players are black, that's some form of Hitlerian racism. Imagine that this is not satire. Imagine that this professor felt sufficiently compelled that he, is, he feels he's doing the right thing. Imagine that this person can grovel in this way for writing an article about college football going on. Think about how people go to their death. Think about people who are executed because of their identities, genocides around the world. The dignity with which they, f they walk towards the inevitable, not bowing, not groveling, not giving up their identity. So to their death, they go with full dignity. This person grovels in ways that are unimaginable because he wrote an article about college football continuing. This is why I fight. Because he is supposed to be the, the sentinel that is standing at the gates of reason teaching our children how to think. And he thinks that he's on the right side of the moral compass by groveling in such a self-loathing, insane manner. This guy shouldn't be teaching. He should be committed to an insane asylum. Think about it. We used to view people who have deep self-loathing as candidates to go see a therapist, rightly so because a fractured person who feels no sense of self-worth is not a good way to navigate through the world. But now we've created the zeitgeist where to say that you are a useless piece of S because you are white and you dared say that football should go on, but football is largely played by black athletes, therefore you are racist, and you feel the pressure to write such an article, is precisely why I fight the way that I do. Take this guy and multiply him by 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 of educators who are feeling the same things, who are spewing the same thing, and then you get why we are where we are in our culture wars. Don't sit idly, mock this, denigrate this, reject this. Every person should be judged on the merits and flaws of their total personhood. Whether you are white or black says very little about who you are as an individual. It's a skin you. It's the same as saying, I have green eyes, therefore I'm good. You have brown eyes, apologize, Hitler. We thought that we had defeated this, but now we have the exact same racism with coupled with self-hatred all cloaked in a progressive social justice robe it is grotesque and it should end this person this person should live to be embarrassed that he ever felt the desire or reflex to write such an article frankly i feel sorry for this person i wish you all a good night